And it's time for Age of Bronze gameplay with Egypt, so let's just dive straight into the juicy details. Let's build some wells for sanitation, because we know how important growth is, and let's take a look at the geopolitical situation. The Egyptians were pretty xenophobic. We hate the Nubians, they constantly rebel against us, we need to subjugate them. The Libyans always try to settle the Delta, they've been invading Egypt many times, one of our oldest enemies, and they have to be dealt with. The Canaanites have been expelled from Egypt, once the Ixos ruled Egypt, and now the tables have turned. We must prove to the world that Egypt is the greatest power, so how are we gonna do that? Well, through the best way there is, violence. So let's learn army reforms. What can we build? Hmm. We can build Merchant's Wharf times two, that's perfect. And now look at this. Why are we able to build that? Because of the Nile, it has different flood stages. If the water level is good, great, everybody is happy, more money, less construction costs, it's awesome. If the water is too much or too little, the people are gonna get pissed and, well, we don't wanna do that, do we now? Let's march here. And now let's do something that every devout Egyptian should do. Hold a festival. Now, in Age of Bronze, you can send expeditions for tin or copper. Very important, especially throughout the campaign, because without bronze, how are you gonna upgrade your armies or even get even more money from trade? Organizing expeditions for resources or contact or whatever you want and religious festival. That's what we're gonna do. Meanwhile, we're just gonna recruit one unit of Nile Spearmen and get ready to invade Nubia. Just in case, you know, by the way. So it's time to honor the gods and let's look. Amundra is overall great, just all good benefits. Anubis, great for the army, good for spies. Osiris, great for agriculture and good for growth. Ptah, amazing for industry and for strategic resources, and I'll show you why. Look at this, all of a sudden we got all the rare ingredients from the whole world. Everybody's gonna wanna trade with us basically, even if they hate us. Look at Megiddo. They already wanna trade from the start of the game, but thanks to this, we can milk them dry. We just became that much richer. Edom? They also want to trade. Fantastic. How hard can we milk them? Okay. Wait, what? Okay, so uh, looks like they love getting bankrupt. You know what? I'm not even going to try to trade with our enemies because that'd just be unfair, okay? So we got a lot of money thanks to the god of craftsmanship, so we are going to invest that into building our cities up. We're gonna make a muster field, so we need to defend against uh, the Libyans eventually. We're gonna leave this building slot open, we're still waiting here, and that means we get to recruit more units before we go fight. You know what? I'm loving this. And speak of the ancient enemy, the Meshwesh decide they wanna get beaten into the ground? Well, okay, come at me, bro. I dare you. I double dare you. Historically, the Meshwesh were the strongest Libyan confederation, and together they pushed the other tribes and even had Sea People mercenaries with them. They invaded western Egypt through the Delta, and if it wasn't for the pharaoh Merneptah, at the Battle of Perire, he destroyed them. Otherwise, Egypt might have well been conquered by Libyans by that point. It's pretty crazy, right? But we're not gonna let that happen. We're gonna recruit a general. It's gonna be somebody from the other house. Chariots, because, hello, why would you not wanna recruit chariots in the Bronze Age? Meanwhile, let's get ready to invade the Nubians, recruit mercenaries and regular troops, and onward we march. It's almost like they know I'm massing troops in front of their border. It's almost like they can literally see me getting ready to stab them with pointy sticks or something. Well, you know what? It's not gonna help you guys. All right, so now our plan is to research growth. So we're going for temple granaries. We're not gonna build anything yet because we're waiting for more growth to build the temples in both of our provinces. We're just getting ready for... I think... No, actually, we're fine. It's time the Nubians learn their place. Okay. 
you want to join in on the party too. Why don't we all just make a giant rave in Egypt because it's f***ing funny, isn't it? Well, it's not gonna be funny when I conquer your land. Okay, okay, seriously. It's not like I didn't have a reason to go to war, but now you people are just trolling me at this point, ain't you? So before we get into the battle, why was Nubia so important to Egypt? Well, it's quite simple. Many exotic resources such as gold or animal hides, ivory, and the deadliest archers the world had seen by that point, and for a very long time after. Listen, we could auto-resolve this, but it would actually be devastating, so we have to fight this one, and trust me, it'll be worth it. For us in the long run. Alright, so starting in slow-mo just to get some information in. So, we're attacking Punt, and historically that's the place where Queen Hatshepsut sent her mystical expedition. Experts are still undecided where Punt was, some are saying it's Eritrea or further down the coast of the Horn of Africa, some are saying it's more west, but essentially, it's kind of that area. For a lot of exotic resources. Now, here you can see the fantastic model for the Sheridan, the Sea People. And they are equipped with Egyptian corslets. On the Kadesh reliefs, they were the bodyguards of Ramses II, and they are equipped in an elite Egyptian fashion. And now, between them, you can see regular Egyptian troops, so you kind of see the difference, don't you? Just slow motioning to show off some of the amazing new unit assets. Just look at the Pharaoh's chariots. This is all historically accurate, extremely well researched. Even though we don't have many preserved Egyptian helmets, this is exactly faithful to the source material. And now, let's attack in normal speed. So our battle plan is essentially simple. They're not gonna go out of the city. We're gonna use our superior archers to destroy them, separate the spearmen into the lines, and then use the sea people and Egyptian swordsmen to just butcher the flanks. Chariots are gonna be able to do some skirmishing. I can't really rely on them to break through the spearmen yet. They are chariots, but at the end of the day, they're Egyptian chariots. They're not something heavy like the Hittites or Assyrians. It is what it is. Can't look a gift chariot in the mouth, as one might say. The archers are getting ready for first contact, we're gonna get some beautiful volleys off. And just look at that, the Egyptians are firing, now it's gonna be the Nubian turn. The most elite archers of the ancient world, honestly, when you think about it, and for so many hundreds of years, their tradition has been basically unbroken and unmatched. Okay, their slingers are moving up, now we can actually split our infantry in here. And we're just gonna wait and coordinate our attack at the same time so that we can confuse them. There we go. Gonna start skirmishing. The slingers are already taking some damage. Gonna move in. The archers are in no threat. They do have infantry. They can't catch me because they don't have chariots. I can just spread like this and chill. So I'm gonna get a charge off into their slingers. There you have they're forced to move because of that. Nubian spearmen here. Perfect, perfect. Let me see if I can get a charge into the infantry here. Into the club levies. Yep, there we go. We get a charge. And because we're fresh, we can actually pull through a little bit. We're just going to charge in with these guys. Charge in at the same time. Using these as flankers. Because they don't have enough room to maneuver. We're going to try to take out their archers with ours. Our chariot is stuck. And we're just going to maneuver at the back. We get the perfect charge in. We don't have to worry about anything really. Except the chariot's just screwing us up. I'll use the Egyptian... No, 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 wait, actually, they don't have space to maneuver, that's fine. They're just gonna stalemate here while they're getting flanked, and this is perfect. Everybody gets a counter charge, the archers get free reign. My chariot is free to just mow into the archers, and let's get a beautiful look at that. Like, Pharaoh's chariots are just beautiful. Everything they've done with the unit assets in the game is amazing, and what you're looking at now is just Rome 2 jank. This has nothing to do with the mod. It's just, you know, chariots doing chariot stuff. The enemy is retreating, we're just trying to get into them. It's probably gonna be some good bowling in a couple of seconds. Eh, there we go, perfect. They're just getting collapsed, there's nothing they can do. Absolutely butchered, decimated. And let's continue with the drag through, because this is how you use chariots in the mod. They're not supposed to be stationary combatants, they're way too squishy for that. 
Now we're just gonna swap the targets of the archers. We're gonna use the chariots to charge into the rear. Infantry is just a stalemate. There is nothing they can do. But the sea people will absolutely butcher the Nubian royal guard. Look at this. It's just a massive, brutal melee clash happening. You can see some animations. You can see the chariots fighting the levy units and about to get a clean charge off soon. They're also firing, and the sea people are just devastating them alongside the Egyptian swordsmen. Unfortunately, I'm pretty happy not being a Nubian noble right now. Now, let's see, the local slingers are firing, but they're irrelevant targets. We need to destroy them as fast as we can here. And dragging through is extremely weird. Issuing the attack order is much cleaner, but the more tired your unit gets is just weird. Fatigue in this mod just makes it harder for units to push through, and now they just routed. That's fantastic for us. Look at the amount of kills on the chariot so far. They all routed there. That's great. A flank's been collapsed. We need to focus on the um, Royal Nubian bodyguard, but meanwhile, we're just going to get another clean charge in. The archers have got a fantastic number of kills, considering they weren't counter skirmishing. They were just charging enemy. They were fighting <laughs> enemy spearmen. My chariots were the one doing the archer work. They're panicked. There's nothing they can do. Nubian spearmen by default are better than Nile levies, but here I got the quantity and quality when it comes to chariots. So, and bowmen. That's all that matters, really. The Nubian Royal Guard is trying to hold desperately, but there's a reason the Sheridan kinda were feared warriors, you know, and that reason is extremely disgusting equipment in the form of the Nawe to a long sword and pretty quality armor. And that's about it. I mean, there's not much more you can go with this battle. You can just take a look at some beautiful animations. The levies just butchering each other while the chariots try to decide because of lovely AI pathfinding. What are they actually going to do with their life choices? They're broken and that's a one battle for Egypt. Well, that was an easy battle, but you can kind of see how auto resolve could have screwed us over there. We're going to subjugate them. There are, well, let's call it like this. There are clients with benefits and uh, they're not hitting us as much as they expected. Maybe they want to trade. Hey, buddies, are you OK? Hey, you know what? Fine. We get some money. That's pretty juicy. We don't get any replenishment, and that was the crucial part there. If we were relying on auto-resolve and we lost even like 40% of our army, this would have massively slowed down our push into Kerma. Kerma, one of the most important places in Nubia. No wonder that it's so heavily protected. But are we gonna take it by storm? Or are we gonna bait the enemy into attacking us and just swooping in and claiming what's rightfully ours? That's something you're gonna have to find out in the next episode. I hope you enjoyed this Age of Bronze gameplay preview. Got to see some cool units, some combat, some infrastructure building and faction mechanics. This is just a start. If you enjoyed the video, a like and a sub, that would definitely be greatly appreciated. But most of all, if you enjoy the mod, go show the modder some support to join the Discord, all that kind of stuff. And actually play the mod when it's released in a couple of days. Until the next time...